thank you, Bishop Hoyt, our great senior bishop. Give him another hand. Giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, to Senior Bishop Thomas Lanier Hart and Mrs. Hart, and to the chair of the College Drive Bishop, Bishop Kenneth W. Carter, host Bishop, Bishop Sylvester Williams, and Mrs. Williams, all other distinguished members of the College of Bishops who mean so much to me, and your spouses to my wonderful wife, co-worker, and partner in ministry. We work together, and we've been working together now, married for 49 years. Can you stand up, Mrs. Emery Lee Stewart? Dr. Tyrone T. Davis and Mrs. Davis, our distinguished director of the convocation. Would you give him a hand? <laughs> to all other general officers and your spouses, uh, the judicial council members, connectional officers, heads of educational institutions, and certainly all of the members of the mighty, thriving, 35th District. Won't y'all stand? Won't y'all stand? Stand up wherever you are. Amen. They over there. Y'all, they over here too. Amen. We give God the glory. Our son who makes many sacrifices to just go to CME meeting. She, he loves CME church members just as much as we do. Stand up, Paul Jr., wherever you are. Okay, he's over there. All other members of the convocation and of our great church. Oh, I'm going to say that again, of our great church. Come on, give the CME church. I remember, no, if you want to get me angry, you said something about the CME church. All guests and friends, I too. Even though Bishop Hoyt mentioned, I, I too have to say I greet you in the name. Right. Uh, I'm glad I'm not ashamed Amen. of what the Lord. I see the Lord yes, has done for me. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for your blessings. Use us as we begin this convocation to your glory to your glory in the name of Jesus Amen, Amen. let me use even though this is an address I hope <laughs> let me use a text <laughs> Hebrews 12th chapter Verses 1 through 4. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us Another translation say entangles us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Amen. 
Let me just stop there. And I want to use as a thought remaining focused on the essentials regardless of the condition. Focused on the essential, regardless of the conditions. I'm reminded of a time when I purchased a complex, modern, new, expensive camera. But it kept taking blurred and poor pictures. And the more blurred and poor pictures it took, the more frustrated I became. However, after I overcame my frustration, I discovered that it was nothing mechanically wrong with the camera. It just needed to be focused. My experience with that camera reminds me of the state of a number of mainline church denominations and even the CME church because we need to become more focused. Tom S. Rainer son Sam Rayner in the outstanding resource book entitled Essential Church reclaiming a generation of dropouts point out and I, point out and I agree that we leaders and members of modern mainline churches are frustrated because we've tried so many new or different ideas We've tried so many strategies and so many workshops and so many symposiums and so many seminars and so many conventions and so many retreats and so many meetings. And yet many of our churches are still declining. if meetings alone would have solved our problem. They would be dissolved. As I look back, one of the things that hindered me and caused me to make mistakes over and over as I tried to properly focus my new camera was I kept repeating what I used to do with my old Kim. But in relation to the church, as Rainer and Rainer point out in their book that modern mainline churches like the CME Church are losing 70% of our young adults between the ages of 18 and 22. And I'm convinced that God is calling us to stop repeating some things over and over. To stop making the same mistake over and over. To stop being locked in on the same things over and over. I've called out to pastors, I pointed out to pastors in the 30 Episcopal District that as some of our churches keep spending 30 minutes every Sunday with announcements. Over and over. That we need to keep in mind that the main reasons people come to church are not for announcements. The main reasons 
for the needs of our folk in our congregations are not more announcements. Well, also, I, as I look back on the things that hindered me as I tried to properly focus our new camera, was I assumed that I would make precise and clear pictures just because when I looked through the view mirror, they look good. And I thought just because they looked good that I would have good looking pictures. But in reference to the church, as Raina and Raina point out in their book, that among the top eight reasons church dropouts report they stopped going to church was because we church members seem too judgmental. <laughs> Hypocritical. And they have problems connecting with us then it is easy to conclude that God is speaking to us and letting us know that just having good looking things, just having good looking black suits, good looking white dresses, good, good looking ushers uniforms, good looking choir and preachers robes, that just having good looking things will not make a good church. Because God is calling us to do more than look good. God is calling us to that if we want to improve our churches. Amen. God is calling us to improve not only the looks, but improve in forgiving, improve in welcoming people, improve in accepting people, improve in loving people, improve in listening to people, improve in being patient with people, improve in helping people, improve in providing ministry for people, improve in being friendly with people, improve in caring for people. And then if we do all that, God will make us look good. Amen. Then not only that, uh, as I was experienced with my camera, I, I thought, amen, just because uh, I, I wanted to focus, I, I thought it would just do good because it was new. And I am a strong proponent of new things, new ideas, new methods, and singing some new songs. But as Rain and Raina point out, 157 million people in the U.S. claim to be Protestant. Yet only 28% of them go to church. 